All right, I love it when my uh, viewers uh, teach me something I don't know. And I was having a discussion with a viewer on my video on optocouplers. Uh, in that video, I measured the uh, frequency response of the optocoupler. It's fairly slow. Uh, they're not a very quick device. You can buy real fancy ones that are quick, but most of them are kind of slow. And he said, well, there's a trick to make them go faster. And he mentioned a particular thing uh, that I was aware of, but I didn't think you could use it with optocouplers. Um, so let's, let's talk about it and uh, then see if it does work with optocouplers. So uh, this is a typical transistor amplifier. Uh, there's some vo vo voltage here. And if you, uh, if you wiggle out here, you're going you're gonna to wiggle out here. And so the voltage goes up and down here, and the voltage goes up and down here. And one of the reasons that transistors aren't infinitely fast is something called the Miller effect. I guess named after Mr. Miller. Um, and the Miller effect says that in a non-ideal transistor, a real-world transistor, there's always going to be some capacitance between the base and the collector. And this is called the Miller capacitance. And this capacitor slows things down. So if you imagine you have a, uh, a signal and it's coming through some resistor and you have a capacitor to ground, you create a, uh, a low-pass filter and it kills the high frequency and so it rolls it off. So if you have any capacitance in your system, that's bad. So if we, if we had a capacitor on the output, then it would slow it down. Well, having a capacitor here is kind of like having a capacitor on the, on the output. It's a capacitor between the input and the output. And having to charge this capacitor and then discharge it and then charge it and then discharge it, you slow things down. There's a limited slew rate in the system. And so this Miller capacitor, uh, limits the bandwidth of, of this amplifier. So how can you uh, circumnavigate the Miller effect? Is there any way to trick it into, into uh, trying to ignore this capacitor? Well, there's something called a, a, a CAS code configuration, okay? Uh, CAS code. So a CAS code configuration is two transistors wired like this, okay? You have your first transistor, and you have your, everything, everything is the same as this one. You still have, you still have a resistor here. You still have a, 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 a transistor and stuff down here. You're inserting another transistor. And you say, well, well, how does that help? Well, if you bias this transistor with some voltage, we'll call it V prime, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna put a DC, a DC voltage, okay? We're gonna put a DC voltage here and this will be like a emitter follower, and it will get a, a voltage here that's uh, this voltage minus the diode drop, okay? And if this is DC, then it's going to be DC right here. It's going to hold this node at a single voltage, and it's not going to waver. And you can say, well, then your whole thing won't work. Well, just because you hold a voltage constant doesn't mean you're holding everything constant. You're actually letting current flow, okay? So current can go up and down, but this voltage is going to stay the same. So as you wiggle out here, the current is going to wiggle, but the voltage is not going to wiggle, okay? And so this capacitor here uh, never sees a voltage change on it. And so uh, as fast as you can wiggle the current, this 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 uh, capacitor doesn't get in the way. And that's what a cast code arrangement does. It, it speeds things up. All right. And so you still get, you still get current changes in this resistor, which means you get voltage changes out here. Okay. So the current and the resistor, you still get voltage changes out, but you're not getting any, any voltage changes here. So yeah, look up cast code arrangements. I was always fascinated with cast code, uh, uh, configurations in, in my way back days. I think I actually designed a circuit once that used this. I don't remember what it was in, but I, but I, but I actually used a, a cast code arrangement uh, in, in an amplifier. Um, yeah, so he said, if you have an optocoupler, okay, so you have a, a, a phototransistor, and this is all in a box, then you're wiggling the, the, the light and the, the light comes out and shines onto the photodiode, uh, phototransistor, 
And these things notoriously have lots of capacitance in them. And so you're always having to charge that capacitor and discharge the capacitor and charge that capacitor and discharge that capacitor. And it, it, it can slow things down. So he says, uh, you can put a CAS code on it. Now I looked it up because I'd never seen this before. I never, I'd never seen a CAS code on a opto isolator, opto, uh, uh, opto coupler. And not that there aren't any, it's just I haven't been around them very often and probably lots of people know this trick already, but I, it was new to me. So he says, yeah, go ahead and put a, uh, a CAS code arrangement on the, uh, on the output of the uh, optocoupler and you speed things up. And he gave me a paper uh, written by On Semiconductor. And uh, sure enough, they have a configurations where they have a, uh, a CAS code arrangement and you put some bias voltage uh, on this node and magically things are supposed to speed up by a factor of five. Uh, they claimed it went from uh, 10 kilohertz to 50 kilohertz in their particular application. Uh, all right, so let's wire one up and, uh, and see what it does. Uh, let, me t let, me, let me first, g I'm first gonna wire up an optocoupler um, I'm first going to wire up an optocoupler with, without this transistor, okay? With, so it's just a uh, 1K resistor. Okay, I'm going to have a 1K resistor to plus 12 volts, right? 1K plus 12 optocoupler, and I'm going to drive this thing. I'm going to drive it with uh, 100 ohms and whack this, uh, uh, whack this LED on and off with a function generator, and we'll take a look at uh, the output here, okay? Let's take a look. So... Uh, this is my breadboard over here, and what we're really interested in is what the oscilloscope looks like. So let me, uh, let me arrange the camera so it's not tilted here. Okay, so the uh, yellow line is the uh, drive pulse into the, um, uh, into the LED, so we're turning on very hard. And when you turn on the LED, you're turning on the transistor, which means you're going from a high state to a low state. It's conducting, so it pulls it down to ground. And so when this comes high, then this one will go low. And we can take a look at that time constant, and we can say, oh yeah, that thing's coming down here. There must be a little bit of capacitance. You see a little bit of curve to it, and it's taking some time for it to, uh, for it to roll off, okay? And so we could... Uh, we could sort of measure things here, I guess. Um, do I really want to measure things? No, not really. <laughs> so we'll just kind of count. Okay, so it's taking about one, two, so it's about one, two, it's taking about two divisions. And the divisions are 500 nanoseconds. So it's taking about uh, 1,000 nanoseconds for it to, for it to fall down. All right, so I'm now going to introduce that transistor, okay? And let me do that. And there we go. So that's with the CAS code. And you can see it got much, much faster. Now it's only about uh, a quarter, or about a half a division, let's say. So now it's like 250. So it went from 200, went from 1,000 to 250. So, so we see a 4x improvement. They were claiming a 5x improvement, and maybe it is if you take the right measurements and stuff, but we're seeing at least a 4x improvement. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Let's, uh, let's go back, let me show you this. Let's go back to this one, and let's do a reference save on it. So channel two, save. Now if I remove the scope, yeah. So this is our, this is our saved reference, and then we'll go to the CAS code configuration and there we go so you can see yeah we're so so much faster now so it works really good um so yeah so i definitely learned something i learned something today sounds like a south park episode i'm just introducing this transistor and uh i needed to put some dc voltage here so how did i do that let me let me redraw this because it's getting kind of messy okay so i'm using a um Oh, what's the part number here? This is a P, I'm using a PC817 optocoupler, and I'm using a, a 2N2222A uh, a, uh, transistor. I'm using a 1K resistor, using 100 ohms, if anybody wants to play at home. 
Uh, and then I need to put some type of reference here. So I've got a, uh, I've got a, a 2K potentiometer from 12 volts to ground. Okay, so that is my circuit. And uh, I noticed that uh, you have to be uh, careful how you choose what voltage sits here. You're setting up some type of bias condition inside the uh, inside here. This voltage will set kind of the quiescent current through this system and stuff. So um, let me turn this, uh, adjust this while you watch it on the screen because it's it is sort of interesting. Zoom in. All right, let me get an adjuster here. So I'm going to adjust that uh, potentiometer that sets the uh, uh, that Miller voltage. And you can see, if I move in that direction, it gets kind of ugly. And I move in this direction, it gets kind of ugly. So it is it is kind of sensitive to what voltage it wants. But you can find a nice sweet spot. Uh, and so the sweet spot is kind of like kind of like right there. Um, and I'm sure there's math and stuff you could figure out what that's supposed to be. But um, yeah, it does seem to work really, really good. At least a full rex improvement in speed. And uh, yeah, like I said, I learned something today.